Hey, how's it going everyone? Hey, uh, wanted to come at you with a video, another one for this week. Um, but before I get started, I wanted to uh, give a couple of announcements. One, um, if you're watching this video from Facebook, I would just please encourage you, go like, share, comment, get this message out to everyone you can. Um, another thing, you're going to see a link at the bottom attached as well. Uh, that link is going to get you directly to the BTT Ministry YouTube page. Uh, channel. If you go there, hit the subscribe button. All of the videos from the ministry of the BTT ministry will be posted on there, have been posted on there, so you get full access to all of those videos. Uh, another thing, if you're watching this video from Facebook, I would just ask and just please consider uh, subscribing as well. Again, you're going to get access to all those videos. You're going to see them all um, and even get notifications for when a new video gets posted and put up on there. All right. And one more thing, if you are watching this from YouTube or from Facebook, you'll see another link attached down below, and that link is going to give you direct access to uh, the BTT Ministry Patron account. And basically what the Patron account is, is it's an opportunity for you to, if these videos have been a blessing to you, and you want to bless our ministry by giving financially, you can, you have that option. Uh, you've got four, four uh, monthly giving options, and uh, basically... When you go there, it's going to explain everything to you. It's going to explain exactly where your money is going to and what it's going towards. And some of those patron account uh, giving options, you'll actually receive something in the mail from the BTC ministry. All right. So go check that out. Again, the biggest thing that we would ask, that my wife and I would ask for, is just prayer. All right. If you can't give, that is totally fine. If you can't subscribe to the YouTube channel, that is totally fine. Um, but please just be praying for us in this ministry, all right? So let's get rolling. So this week I've been reading in, in the Gospel of Luke, and I've been in chapter 18 and in chapter 19. And reading through this, um, I, I'm, I'm reading about Jesus counseling the rich young ruler. And, and so I'm going to go ahead and read verses 18 all the way to 30, but I'm going to read 18 to 23 right now and then 24 to 30. In a few, all right? And so what we got here is, we've got in verse 18, it says, Now a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. And he said, all these things I have kept from my youth. And so I'm going to stop right there. So we've got this rich young ruler. He's young. He comes before Jesus. He, he, he meets Jesus at some point. And he's asking Jesus, you know, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So he's already got the wrong motive, the wrong way about going about this. You know, he, he's got this idea. In, in the Gospel of Matthew, it says, the rich one, what good thing shall I do to inherit eternal life? And, and so that's already the wrong motive because Jesus corrects him and says, why do you call me good? No one is good but one. That is So Jesus is correcting this rich young ruler saying, hey, God is the good one. You are not good. And so what does Jesus do after that? He lists some commandments. He lists five of them. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. So he names five commands. And the rich young ruler's response, all these things I've kept from my youth. And, and so some scholars say, yeah, he, he probably did. And others say, no, he didn't. He's just full of himself. When you do more detailed search in this passage, you'll see that. And so what does Jesus say? So after this rich young ruler comes to him, what can I do? Jesus lays out some commandments, and he's the rich young ruler. I've kept these. I'm good. I'm in the clear. Well, Jesus goes directly for the heart, directly for what this rich young ruler actually idolizes and worships and loves, because it's not Christ. Jesus says, you still lack one thing. Sell all that you have, and distribute to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. 
So, so where is Jesus going? He's going directly at where this rich young ruler is just not willing to give up for Christ's sake. And so what does the rich young ruler do? It says, but when he heard this, he became very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And then we never hear about the rich young ruler again. Because he was not willing to give up everything to follow Christ. Because this 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 walk with the Lord is, is not a halfway, I'm going to follow Jesus in some areas of my life. I'm going to submit to the Lord in some areas of my life. I'm going to give up some sins of my life that are in my life. Other sins I'm going to hold on to. No, no it's, it's either you're all in or you're not. It's either you're willing to give up everything and all things for Christ's sake or you're not. And if you're not willing to do all that, then you'll go do what the rich young ruler. You'll end just like the rich young ruler ended. You, you won't end in heaven. You won't. You're not going to end up in glory with the Lord. Because your heart and your desires, your treasure, is not for the Lord. It's for the stuff. It's for your sin. It's for your wickedness and and your lawlessness and, and your sin. And then we read in verses 24 through 30, it says, And when Jesus saw that, he became very sorrowful. I mean, Jesus is actually sorrowful. He's actually hurt by seeing what this rich young ruler decided to put above him. He said, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. So so we, we've got Jesus making this big claim, this big statement, how hard it is for the rich to enter into the kingdom of God. In fact, it's easier for a camel to fit through the eye of a needle. I mean, you think about a camel, how big those are. And you think about a little bitty needle, a sewing needle, this tiny little hole. I mean, that's a big claim by Jesus. Such a big claim that the people who heard it said in verse 26, who then can be saved? Because you have to think, in this time, the rich people were like the people. They were like, lift them up. They got everything. They get everything. They're praised, whatever. You know, the the poor who weren't rich, they're, they're just another thing. And so these people are like, man, if the rich, it's hard for the rich to enter the kingdom of heaven, man, how much harder is it going to be for me, a poor person? But above what Jesus says, in verse 27 it says, But he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. How beautiful is that? I mean, you see, you hear the sovereignty of God, salvation right in that text. These things are impossible with men. But what's impossible with men are possible with God because salvation is a complete supernatural work of the beautiful Trinity in saving a person. Because we as sinners, we as lost, unconverted people are dead in our trespasses and sin. We are we are basically walking mummies. I mean, we, we are this flesh we're walking we're breathing but we're actually dead inside we're like dead bones we've got a heart of stone and unless the lord breaks our heart of stone and changes it as scripture talks about for a heart of flesh and, and unless the lord does the supernatural work of drawing us in there is no way for us who are dead in our trespasses and sin to ever come to the knowledge of the Lord, to ever come to saving grace without his supernatural, sovereign, beautiful work. Verse 26, and it says, And so those who heard it said, Who then can be saved? But he said, These things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Then Peter said, I love Peter. Peter always seems to stand up. He says some pretty foolish things when he stands up, but he also says some pretty amazing things. 
Peter will be the guy who stands up and says, Jesus, you know what? I'm not going to let them crucify you. I'm not going to let them hurt you or take you. And then, well, yeah, we saw how that goes. But then we also have Peter saying, confessing Jesus as Lord. And what did Jesus say? You know, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven has. So we see Peter doing this. He, he stands up boldly. And he tells Jesus, we have left all to follow you. And, and he says to them, I love Jesus says to them, surely I say to you, there is no one who has left house or parents or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom of God who shall not receive many things more in this present time and in the age to come eternal life. And so it's just a beautiful promise to say, hey, it's worth following me. Jesus is making it, uh, making a beautiful promise saying, hey, you following me, you, you giving up everything, you, you leaving everything to follow me, you putting to death your sin and your life and your idols and everything that you... You doing all that, it's, trust me, it's worth it. Trust me, it's worth it. There will be rewards in heaven. The, the, trust me, it's worth it. And so, and, and, I, and I, just a little small thing. I love how Jesus mentions, or brothers, or wife. Because we have to be remembered too that Peter did leave his wife. He didn't divorce or anything like that. He just left his wife to go be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Jesus called him, hey, come follow me. And that's what Peter did. And me and my wife were talking about that yesterday, and it was like, there's no cell phones back then. So think about that. And, and they stayed faithful to each other. That's pretty incredible. But there's a reward. There's a reward. You know, I got, we got to remind ourselves, Brandon, there is a reward. And, and for the Christian listening, there is a reward for leaving it all for Christ's sake. And so we have this encounter with the rich young ruler. We see the beautiful promises of God and, and the beautiful working of salvation by God and Him alone. And then we read in, in chapter 19 about a man named Zacchaeus. And he's not just any man, as, as Luke chapter 19 verses 1 through 10 talk about. It's pretty amazing. It says, Then Jesus entered the, and passed through Jericho, now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into the sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. So, so we have this rich tax collector, Zacchaeus, short man, going through the crowd, wants to see Jesus. Climbs up the sycamore tree just to see Jesus. And mind you, tax collectors are hated in this time. They steal the money from people, they rip people off, and they're really rich. And what, what happens? Verse 5, And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him, and said to him, Zacchaeus! Make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. I, mean, I just picture that. Zacchaeus climbing this tree, this short-statured man, and he's looking for Jesus, and Jesus walks by him, and Jesus looks up at him, and he's like, Zacchaeus, come on down. I'm staying at your house tonight. I'm staying with, with you tonight. And what does Zacchaeus say? What does Zacchaeus do? So he made haste, came down, and received him joyfully. We didn't see that with the rich young ruler. But when they saw it, people see this, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Don't we see that even today? I mean, we even see that today. You know, Christians going and, and socializing with people who don't know Christ and other Christians being like, yo, what are you doing? And yes, that's wrong in a sense of if you're a professing Christian, you're going to hang out with sinners and you're practicing and indulging in what they're doing, which the sin, if that's drinking, getting drunk, uh, if that's doing drugs, or if that's dancing on some man or female, you know, whatever it is, if you're practicing and indulging in that sin and the sins that those lost people are doing and committing, well, then you're just as wicked as they are. But if you're going in there as a Christian, 
I'm going to be salt and light. I'm going to, I'm going to magnify the name of Christ. I'm going to share the gospel with these people. Well, then we as Christians have no right to complain about that. But except what we should do is praise God and pray for you. And pray that souls will be added to the kingdom of God because people treated Zacchaeus like, oh man, he's too far out to reach for God's salvation. He sins way too much. He's, he's a sinner, man. And that's where we get dangerous. So verse 8, it says, Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, so now they're at Zacchaeus' house, Look, Lord, I gave half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restored fourfold. So Zacchaeus is like, I've given up half my goods to the poor, and anybody I've stolen from, anybody I've, lied about their taxes, hey, I've given them more than more back from what I've taken. And Jesus said to him, what a beautiful thing. Today, salvation has come to this house because he also is the son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And those verses are so good. And the last one, for the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. It makes me think of this, the 99 sheep, one goes astray. And then I'll, I'll attach that in the bottom of this link so you can go in and read that. But I love verse 9. Today salvation has come to this house. You, you have two very rich people. The rich young ruler and Zacchaeus. The rich young ruler was never given a name in Scripture. But Zacchaeus, we know Zacchaeus. But both had, both had the opportunity. Salvation was offered. It was there for both men. But only one man was willing to say, Jesus is worth it all. Jesus is the one I want to worship and glorify and honor. My stuff on this earth is fleeting. My stuff on this earth will be eaten up by moths. That scripture talks about. The rich young ruler loved his stuff way too much. But Zacchaeus loved the Lord far more than what all Zacchaeus had. And what a beautiful thing that is. And and a lot of people tend to to think, oh, this is talking about the rich. Well, I'm not really rich. So, you know, I'm in good standing. And, and I would just remind you, those who are living in America, um, how rich you really are. Compared to the world, I, I don't, don't quote me on this. Um, I didn't do my research before on this part, but I think most of the entire people on the planet are living off of like less than a dollar a day. We're here making $50,000 a year, $60,000, $70,000, $80,000, $100,000 a year, a million dollars, you know, millions of dollars a year, and we're still like, ugh. Need more money, need more money, I'm poor, I'm poor. But in fact, we're very rich. And how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because the stuff. And I'll say this. I was talking to my wife yesterday in closing. Um, my wife and I, when we, when we first got married almost three years ago, we had little to nothing in our apartment. And those were some of the best memories because we leaned on Christ so much in those times but as we bought a house later on and bought a brand new car and, and we did those things which is not sin to do those things and buy those things but when we did those things our relationship with the Lord became eh, it was more on the back burner at times it was it was easier to get distracted because then we had TVs in the house and and we had different things in the house that we could do and, and it was 
and it was a it was a tough you know it was a correction by the lord for both of us but it just made me think man lord like how easy is it for me i mean according to america's standards yeah i'm probably on the poor side i'm not really middle class you know whatever but but to the world standards i'm rich and that's the standards i have to view it by that's the standards we need to view it by man we're so rich we have so much. You have a roof over your head. If you, if you have a food in your house, if, if you have a working vehicle, whatever it is, like, you're so rich. And so don't let these, don't be like the rich young ruler and say, I love my things, my possessions far more than the Lord. And I'm not willing to give up everything to follow him. And so, uh, just wanted to share that with you. I pray that this would be an encouragement. This would help steer people to put their focus on Christ. Steer people to say, man, if I'm not willing to give up anything, my, everything for Christ's sake, then I can't be his, his child. I can't be his disciple. I, I can't. I'm, I'm just as lost as anybody else and so uh pray that would be an encouragement um that's something you're thinking about uh, i was reading just to end with this i was reading about the man who who had all this oh man where's it at uh and i think it's in matthew i could be wrong though i don't want to take too much more time but um, it's basically this, this man has all these crops and, and all these things and, and Jesus, he, he, the man's like looking at all this, his stuff. He, he built these barns and, and, um, he all that and he looks around and he goes, man, I've got a lot of stuff. Awesome. And then what does Jesus tell the man? Like. Tonight your soul is required of you. And so, uh, you know, we don't know. And that man died. That that night, that man, his life was taken from him by the Lord. And so, we don't know when tomorrow is our last day. And we need to be reminded. Yeah, here it is. In the parable of the rich fool. So it says, Then one of... From the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made you the judge or attributor over you? And he said, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crop? So he said, I will do this. I will put down... I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will store my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods and laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So he who is who lays up treasure for himself is not rich toward God. And that doesn't mean you, you know, you know, that a lot of people take that and talk about tithing or whatever. Um, but we're not going to get into that. Um, the main thing is this man stored up all this stuff, looked around, man, I got so much good stuff. I'm, I'm going to be merry, eat, have a great time. And Jesus, and the Lord, says, Fool. This night your soul is required of you. And so it's just it's just a sobering reminder that we're never guaranteed tomorrow. We're never guaranteed uh, another minute. And that the Lord determines when we live and when we die. And that our breath is in his hands, in the palm of his hands. And at any moment he can stop our breath. And so I would just encourage you, have that in your mind. Get right with the Father. Whatever sin, whatever idol you have mustered up to be over Christ, put it to death. Run to the Father, repent, and believe the gospel. Put your faith in Christ. 
and, and he will, like I said, supernaturally work the beautiful trinity in saving you. And so I just pray that I would encourage you and lift you up today. Thank you for, for listening. Uh, my dog, my wife and I's dog, Novak, uh, joined in the video a little bit. Uh, have a wonderful day. Um, we love you guys. Thank you for everything. Thank you for those who, who share this video and, and, and subscribe to the channel and, and give to the ministry financially. But especially thank you for those who pray for this ministry. All right. Uh, thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful day. All right. Thanks.